Hello, and welcome to my smut den. Ah, that sounds so cringe. Why do I do these things? Hi, welcome to my 72 hours in the Smut Den reading vlog. This is a vlog where for some reason when I started doing this on my channel, I said, let's build a fort. And so now every time we do one of these readathons, I'm in a fort. A fort that I hang out in for 72 hours other than going to the washroom. And sometimes I leave to eat, although a lot of the times I eat in here, but if I need a little break, sometimes I will go eat upstairs. But like, I'm in a fort. That's my little entrance, more sheets, up top sheets. If you don't know anything about this readathon, it is a 72 hour readathon hosted by the Late Night Crew, which is me, Mel from Eleanor Reads, and Rye from Rye's Reading Corner. We ask guest hosts to be a part of it every single time we do one. So this year we have Michelle from Michelle's Library and Brie from Four Paws and a book. And each 72 hour readathon is themed a little bit differently. This is the second time we have done Smut Den, but we also have done a Haunted House one. And I know there are some few other types happening, but Smut Den is the most loved. I don't know why, considering um, I don't I don't read Smut really, but people always want Smut Den. And so here I am trying to read some Smut for 72 hours. So definitely keep a lookout because there will be another 72 hours coming this year, I believe. And it's gonna be a fun brand new theme and never before seen. But in this video, I will be reading Smut. Well, not really smut, but it is called Smut Den because the only rule is that your book does have to have some sort of smut, but there's two wheels that you spin throughout the weekend. You can spin the dark wheel or the light wheel, the dark wheel being anything dark, anything looked upon not so great, and the light wheel being like anything contemporary, anything happy. I am in a fantasy romance mood, so I am going to be trying to read fantasy romance all weekend. I don't think that's gonna work out so well because after I looked at the prompts, I made these to lean towards dark romance, not to lean towards fantasy romance. Like shirtless man is on here. What am I gonna read if I get shirtless man? I need to start doing these readathons and really think to myself and go, can I read something for that prompt? But also, I just choose chaos and hope I never land on it. I have three respins throughout the weekend, so I'm probably gonna use those. Okay, we're gonna do my first spin. Give me something good. Red font. I don't think I have a book with red font. Oh no. You saw me literally five seconds ago. I have decided what I'm gonna read since then, which is What Lies Beyond the Veil. It's probably a little bit of stretch, but there's like, in lies, there's like a little bit of red. So I'm gonna count that. But I did get a package that I'm going to unbox, which is kind of why you got me like five seconds later. I wasn't gonna update you for a while. <laughs> why do they make these things so hard to open? Man, there's packing peanuts all over me. If you don't know already that my top tier patrons, they get a bookmark every month designed by me. And this is this month's. So when you're seeing this video, if you sign up by the end of May, so by like the last day of May is your last day you can sign up. Oh my God, I think it looks so good. They'll be shipped one of these in June. They're double-sided. They're inspired by the Serpent of the Wings of Night. So we have Rain and Araya. The quote on this side is, I give you my body, my blood, my soul, my heart. But on the other side, we have Rain's little saying that says, there she is. It is gold foiled in the font as well as the wings. And then we also have the painted side that you're not gonna be able to see, I don't think. But the sides are also painted gold as well. Completely drawn by me, designed by me. Hello, it's 8.30, so we're a few hours into Smut Den, and I'm about 25% into What Lies Beyond the Veil by Herbert L. Woods. Don't really fully know exactly where this story is going yet, but I'm gonna try and do a synopsis for you. We're following our main character, who lives in this world where it's very like, women are meant to marry, have kids, give heirs, all of that. She's supposed to be a virgin and never touched, you know, like things like that. She goes for like virginity tests, all of that stuff that's very like old school style way of thinking and a way of living. Our main character has made a deal kind of with their lord in order to help her disabled mom and help them, her and her brother, because their dad has been sacrificed, live a better life where she is kind of like his plaything, but not really a plaything and has kind of just like accepted a burden since she was young to be this companion of the lord. Now, because of her needing to be a virgin, he's not allowed to sleep with her because then she isn't fit for another man. And there's a bunch of stuff like that, but that doesn't stop abuse from happening. There is obviously a lot of trigger warnings in this 
in general. No, I'm just from that. But within this world, we also have a fae world. So we have a veil that separates the fae from the humans. We live in the human world and the fae apparently are these like big bads. They sacrifice someone every single year in order to help the veil stay and not have the fairies come be the big bad again because that would be bad and obviously where the story is going what lies beyond the veil it's gonna end up in a fave romance at some point i am not there yet <laughs> but i will say so far i've i have been enjoying the story it's not perfect there are definitely some logical issues in it for me things happen a little bit too fast character motives don't always make sense but in general i like our main character she's sassy she talks about his lancid wee wee at times she is that character that is saying f you to the world she is in and she doesn't want to live this way and she's gonna get out of it somehow i also really like the world building there has been a lot of lore maybe it's not perfect i don't think that the world building is like up to par with like all of the books i read sometimes i don't think that it always completely makes sense but i'm enjoying how much world building there is in the story and i feel like i am getting immersed into the world enough especially with like the current gods and the past gods like the new gods and the old gods and like things like that i do think that there's a lot of interesting lore and history going on and i think we'll continue to get that as we go into the fey lands and I i'm looking forward to it i think it's kind of fun it's been an impromptu buddy read and um at this point me and some friends are hoping to get tickets to a polycon and this author is going to a polycon and it'll be nice since i've read it i hope i like it it's only thursday night and chaos is already been happening on sprints i think that's something people really love about smut den is just like how unhinged smut den is from the very first hour of smut den sprints are always unhinged like the things that come up in smut den you never know what comments you're gonna read and it's a really really fun time anyways i'm gonna continue this is already way too long i will catch up with you in a bit probably around 50 percent and then probably the end again good morning it is friday this is coffee I'm still in the haunted house for Escape the Readathon, so I'm still drinking out of solo cups for Team Bird Ears. I stayed up late last night to finish What Lies Beyond the Veil. I wanted to get my first book done last night, so we stayed up on sprints, we finished it. I ended up giving it a low three when I was playing, like it, it literally just scratched the surface of a three for me in my weighted rating system, and I think I enjoyed it the most out of any of us who read it. Uh, I think that Mel didn't really enjoy it, and Claire ended up DNFing it. I actually don't know about Kaylee. What I liked about it is I really enjoyed the world building and I really liked the writing. I thought it was really, really well written. I've read a lot of fantasy romances that have DNF'd because of the writing and I think that's a big thing for me. I just don't want it to be like too cringe. There was, for me at least, some good moments of banter between the characters. I enjoyed him as like when he was like sassy to her i also enjoyed when she was sassy to him like i do love the banter moments i think the banter came out of nowhere and didn't really fit their personalities but i liked the banter when it happened i already kind of told you what it was about and then essentially we're just following our main character who ends up fey marked after what i explained earlier which means that there's a fey that's gonna come get you and she's trying to escape that and she finds someone else who is fey marked and they journey together there's a lot of journeying a lot of pointless points i think most of the story is just supposed to make you enjoy the characters and really really root for their relationship but it was a little too surface level to like really dive deep i think there's potential here that's why i gave it a three stars like i didn't hate my time with it i really liked the writing the world building as i said but like the characters fell flat and the plot was just so predictable and like fourth wing also the plot was so predictable but like because of the ride or die feeling i had for the characters i didn't mind and i didn't have those feelings within this story i think that there's a lot of potential here and i would be 100% willing to try more from this author, but that this didn't scratch my fantasy romance itch. Yeah, it just, it just fell flat in so many ways. Like, it just felt very surface level the entire time. Yeah. Okay. But I spun last night. I spun before bed because I just wanted to not have to think about it all this morning. So, I spun and I got this. And we're gonna read A Dawn of Onyx by Kate Golden. I don't know anything about this. Anything at all. Really. I've heard good things about it though, so I'm excited. It's a long one, 400 pages, but hoping for good stuff. I'm so tempted though, I'm so bad because like I wanna use my Smut Den bookmark because like we're in the Smut Den, 
but like I want to use my new bookmark. So we'll see. Hopefully I have another physical book that I can read and I can use the other one, whatever one I don't use. I'll update with my thoughts when I know more about what this book actually is about and I'll see you then. It's been a few hours. I'm 100 pages into Dawn of Onyx. It's about noon on Friday, so I still have lots of time. I also grabbed some McDonald's. Well, grabbed it. I got it skipped to my house because, well, with Lexi being the ghost of the manor for Escape the Readathon and her loving McDonald's, at some point I knew during the month I wanted McDonald's and Smut Den seemed like the right time. So far, I am enjoying this. The writing is very juvenile. Like, it feels not polished. It feels a little bit cringy, specifically in the dialogue. But overall, I like the story that we're going on. I think it's going to be slow burn. I like what's being set up within this story. And now it's just whether I can get past that dialogue in the end and whether it can fully suck me in. Because of the dialogue, I'm really noticing a lot of the faults, uh, such as some world building. But I will say with me in fantasy romance, because I'm so used to like epic fantasy, sometimes the world building and fantasy romance just lacks because of that, because they're not setting out to build a world such as the world of like Mistborn by Brandon Sanderson. He, they don't know the ins and outs necessarily because really their focus is the romance and the fantasy world is just like a part of them telling this romance story. Sometimes I think that the like magical threads don't necessarily like match up perfectly but I also have to remind myself like that's not really the purpose of these books sometimes. I don't know if that makes any sense. So I'm a little forgiving in fantasy romance about minor logical issues as long as the romance is still good. I haven't, I think I've met the romance interest but I'm not sure at this point. Uh, but I like that. I like being 100 pages in and having time to let my character grow and learn her motives, her characterization before I'm thrown into like a match and whether I like them as a pair. Like I do like being able to love my female protagonist before I even meet the male protagonist. A synopsis of what I think this book is about. We follow our main character who is from the country Amber and she is a peasant over there like broke just trying to survive. Her brother was just sent to the war. They don't really get a choice here. They're sent because they are in a, in a war right now and young men and probably soon to be young women are sent to battle it out. When her brother ends up back at her house with a grave wound and a story to tell, they end up trying to escape. In her escape, she ends up kidnapped by the Onyx soldiers, which is like the nation that the Amber Nation is fighting in the war. And the Onyx Nation is set is said to be cruel. The king is said to be very malicious and not good intent. Uh, there's rumors about like fae and like beasts and stuff in the Onyx kingdom that there isn't in the Amber kingdom. So she is kidnapped by the king and has to work off a debt and she does this by using her magical abilities as a healer. I think we're gonna get a slow burn enemies to lovers in this that I'm really excited for but other than that I have like no other thought. I'll keep you updated. My name on his lips was like a prayer. If a prayer could be sinfully torturous and sensual, it was nearly enough to make me whimper. Chef's kiss. Chef's kiss of a line. Honestly, this like teasing smut scene was really, really good. Like, there is some character issues in this book, but like a lot of it is just fun and I think personally well done. I'm really enjoying this. This is this is a good time read. Hi, it's 115. I wished I was farther into this book than I am, but I am really enjoying it. I'm at 163 now, so I'm not much farther than the last time I updated you. I didn't want to just come and talk about the book a little bit because there's some things I've been really enjoying. I love the banter. It just like makes me laugh and smile a lot. It reminds me of the banter between like Hawk and Poppy or Araya and Rain. Like there is just like a fun level of banter that happens between them. Also, I have been loving, although I think that the writing is lacking in this, like for sure 
sure. Like, there are some issues with writing, there are some issues with characterization. The characters aren't well fleshed out, in my opinion. I do like some of the writing things that this writer is doing. Like, at the beginning of the novel, she talks really, really poorly about her lying abilities. She's like, I suck at lying. And then she has to do it again and again and again and again. And we're at a point where she just says, I won't. I lied. <laughs> I was getting good at that. And I just think it's fun to see these little things, these comments that have been like made throughout the entire time, but are also like growing with the book and our character. I thought that was kind of fun. Um, yeah, so at this point, I'm still really enjoying it. I do wish we got a little bit more world building, but I like it. And that's all. Like, as long as I'm not hating the book, that's really just successful. No, 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 I'm not ready. I'm not ready. I don't want to continue. I'm not ready. <laughs> I grabbed some Starbucks, a chocolate croissant. I have about 100 pages left and I'm prepared to fall in love and stay up all night. Wonder what I'm gonna read next. I got a vanilla latte half sweet and then sweet cream cold foam on top. Delicious. Oh, that's exactly what I needed. Oh my god. This is better than the smut. I finished A Dawn of Onyx. I had such a fun time with this book. I'm giving it four stars. I don't think it's perfect. There's some things that it definitely has a weakness for. I think our character development isn't necessarily the strongest, especially in the side characters. Like the relationships with the side characters, I never felt like were fully developed, but I really enjoyed the relationship between the protagonist and the love interest. I love their banter and the, their communication. Like I just, I really enjoyed any moments that they were together. And what else can you ask for in a fantasy romance besides being swept away by the moments of the two people supposed to be falling in love you know like what else can i ask for i wished that the world building was a little bit more dense i think this follows something similar to like the from blood and ash theme where like we have a very naive protagonist in the first book and by the end of the first book there's some revelations so that the second book is going to have a lot more world building than this first book did at least that's what i'm hoping for because like i do really enjoy the world that's been created here some of the lore the prophecies stuff like that how the magic works so i want to learn more about that where this book was more focused on our two characters and our character learning about herself. I'm excited about all that and I think that's really good. I really liked the humor in our protagonist. Like I love when there's just like comedy in the flirting and all that. So yeah I really just had a fun time with this one and I don't think it's perfect. I think the writing at times a little bit juvenile but I got used to it as the book went and I thoroughly thoroughly enjoyed my time with it. Like four stars. Can't wait for the second book. I have to wait a whole year though. Really wish I didn't um and it's time to do another spin I'm hoping to be able to read Savage Lands so let's see what I what I land on oh for this book too if you if you liked From Blood and Ash I definitely think you could pick it up if you like Serpent like it does have a good amount of world building and like characters that like I love and like a banter and it is enemies to lovers and so slow burn the author is such a tease in it and I'm here for it and like I love like forbidden realms and like like a haunted forest with like creatures like it has so many buzzwords for me and I really really enjoyed my time with it I'm highly gonna recommend it to people like it isn't it isn't fourth wing it isn't Serpent the Wings of Night. It isn't Akatar, like, um, but it is quite strong and it is an author's debut and I think that she is just gonna get better and better and better as she continues to write. I cannot wait to read the second one. Let's spin though and see what prompt I get next. Okay. And if I, like, we're gonna hold this up. hand on the cover. That doesn't work for me. It, 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 it doesn't work for me. I'm respinning. It's Friday. I can use a respin. Okay, give me something good. Creature. I'm gonna have to look at some covers. I don't think I have a book with a creature on the cover that I like really, really, really want to read. We will look. I looked and I couldn't find anything. Did I choose chaos? It's only Friday night. <sighs> I don't like to use my respins. I really don't. Like, I just feel so lost without them. What if I get Shirtless Man? But like, I could read the Katie Robert for Shirtless Man. I also could read it for Creature. Why does every book I want to read have a discreet cover? Do we count a raven as a creature? No, we're respinning. I'm going to regret it. I know I'm going to regret it. Second respin. In a row. I need to, yeah, Kate, focus on this thing. <laughs> I use my respin. Do I do it? Like, 
<laughs> I'm so scared. I don't think I even know a fantasy romance. Well, I do because Mel's reading one, but I wouldn't like it. That has a one word title. Oh God. I don't know what to do. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. We're gonna do some research. Hopefully when I'm back, it's to tell you that I found a magical book that I want to read and not because I'm gonna do my third respin. I can't. I can't. Update. I found one. It was actually on my Smudge and TBR. It's called Counterpart and it's the story of siblings that are all meant to kill each other. The only thing I'm a little bit nervous about is I read a review and I'm not sure it actually has smut, but I think it does, so I'm counting it because I went in with the best intentions. <laughs> don't come at me, okay? I don't do urban fantasy first off, and all the one-word titles that I could think of were urban fantasy romance, and I do not do urban. I do not like it. Um, anything in our real world, I'm out. I, I don't want. But anyways, yeah, I'm excited to read this. It's on KU, and it's only 300 pages, so I think I should be able to fly through it. Hopefully the wheel is nice to me next time. Excuse what's happening right now. It's 10 p.m., so it's not that late, but I am, I'm feeling really tired this weekend for some reason. Uh, well, I say for some reason, I haven't really been sleeping very well, which is making this whole experience trying to stay up harder even though like i'm not sleeping well and i sleep but like staying up becomes hard i you know concentration is hard but i'm gonna go shower after i talk to you and hope that wakes me up because i want to keep reading but i'm 25 percent into counterpart by ella pine i didn't really know truly what to expect going into this there's not a lot of reviews out for it so i was going into it with an open mind but like willing to you know be like hmm, if i need to dnf it this i need to dnf it i am having an incredible incredible time. I don't know if I'm just in the mood to like everything I read. Like, you know, sometimes you just get into a mood and you're just like, and eh, there's flaws, but like vibes. I'm just here for all the vibes. And sometimes I'm like oddly critical of books. And you know, that's the problem with being a mood reader in general, I find. I don't know. My mood for different things in books is always changing, but this could be five stars for me. <laughs> I'm 25% and I'm really loving the world building and our main character, the way she's feeling about things, the way that she describes things, the way she talks about things. Um, I find her relatable in like not so, I don't necessarily if I find her relatable but I feel like if I was in the situation she's in she's very relatable so counterpart is a story that follows this world where the king made a deal with the gods in order to stop them from raining down destruction he made a deal that means that someone of his blood has to die every year to appease them and of course it's not going to be him so he does this thing where he has real royal blood line kids and then he has kids that are bastards and each royal bloodline kid is matched up with a bastard kid and their the bastard kid is called their counterpart they have similar names everything this kid literally just exists to die at some point. Thing is, the other thing the gods ask for is they have to be killed by, blood has to be spilled by blood, so the counterpart is killed by their half-sibling. Uh, and it happens every single year. One of them is picked to be murdered by their sibling, which is just like trauma. And I'm having a really fun time with it and some <laughs> fun. I'm having a good time seeing it. And the counterparts are meant to be like illiterate. They're not allowed to learn anything. And they're, there's like a lot of guards and stuff to stop them from escaping. And they make it really hard for them to have a life outside of the castle because they can't read. Um, they have no regular life experience, anything like that. Most are not like healed from like injuries and lots of the royal family is kind of cruel and like partakes in injuring their counterparts and things like that. Now, I haven't really gotten to the romance yet, but I do know the romance is a forbidden romance with the librarian teacher at the school. He exists to teach the royal kids about the world, but the counterparts aren't allowed to ever talk to him and our protagonist starts to talk to him and it's like a death sentence to be seen talking to him essentially but like also the death sentence in general so like you know rules are meant to be broken when you only have so many years to live anyways but yeah so far I'm really really enjoying it and I can't wait to see where it goes from here. I finished Counterpart and I'm giving it three stars. I liked a lot of stuff in this book. I really 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 enjoyed the setting of this book. I liked what the setup of the kids that have to kill themselves and the trauma that the king puts on these kids does. I liked how their relationships unfolded. I really specifically liked the relationship between our main character and her royal sister. So the one that she's the counterpart to, I thought that was a really well done relationship. I thought that it represented the trauma of this situation really well. I liked seeing how different people dealt with trauma. I liked seeing the discussion on like, just because you have trauma doesn't mean that you can use that as an excuse. Um, because we obviously have the moms that, we have the moms in this that treat their kids poorly 
and like they're dealing with their own stuff but you can't take that aggression from the stuff you're dealing with out on other people still. I really liked all of those discussions. I thought it was very honest and so I really liked all of that. However, there's not a single smut scene so that's fine. I I just had it as a recommendation for a fantasy romance. I would say it's more like a YA fantasy so it has the romance of a YA book because most of those have romance but it's there's there's like some kissing. That's it. So uh, yeah and I felt like the relationship fell flat. Like the protagonist and the love interest I didn't really ever fully connect to their relationship. I see why it happened. I just wanted more pining and stuff than there was and I think that there was the ability to be pining. And I liked the direction the story overall went. Uh, I do think that it escalated too quickly at the end and then ended. I'm not exactly sure where it's gonna go from here because it is a series. I don't think I'll be continuing on in the series as I feel like it wraps up enough for me as a standalone but I did really enjoy it and I will be recommending it to people. If you typically like YA fantasy, please pick this up. I thought it was a really, really cool and unique setting. I've never seen anything like it. Like, like it was so unique. And I had a really fun experience. I just think it sits really well as a standalone to me. And I don't need what's going to happen next, if that makes sense. But we need to spin again. It's, it's Saturday. I need to read this. I want to read Savage Lands. So I need a wild or discreet cover, I think. I could maybe even stretch black. It's probably a little bit more green, but I think I could stretch black. Here we go. Okay. I can't. No, 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 no. I don't think I have something for hand on the cover. We're respinning. We have to. I, I can't. Oh, I'm gonna regret this. I'm, I'm really, really, really gonna regret this. I wasn't expecting this. Wild is perfect. Okay, here's the thing though. I have Savage Lands, which is what I've been telling you I'm gonna read, so like I should just pick it up. But I also have Between Wrath and Mercy that I need to read this weekend. But I think I wanna pick Savage Lands up. Between Wrath and Mercy is black, wild, or flowers, where this is only wild or, or discreet. So I think I'm gonna use it. I'm gonna do it. Hopefully, hopefully, <laughs> I can do Between Wrath and Mercy. Okay, the wheel liked me, but now I have no respins and it's pure terror. I don't know what this is about. I'll, I'll, I'll update you later. I, um, I started Savage Lands. I'm on page 76. I don't like it. I'm so sad. I used all of my wheel respins just trying to get a prompt that I could read this book and it's just done me dirty. I'm still giving it a go. I haven't decided to DNF it quite yet just because I know that at some point we will be in a prison setting and that's a setting that does work for me. My first thoughts is one, I don't really like the writing. I find it very cringe. Um, the dialogue is cringy. We're always describing what people wear. We're always describing how hot they are. Like, oh, they're hot in their workout clothes and then they have to go to a ball next chapter and they're hot in their ballroom clothes. And it just like, that doesn't, it's just not working for me. There's a lot of just moments that feel like college kids doing college kid things. And I just, I don't want to read about it. I, I want a little bit more than that in, in my books. That's just a me thing. And also so far it's been set in our world and urban. And that is just like the biggest anti-buzzword for me. Like if you tell me it's set in our world as a fantasy, I go flaccid. <laughs> I can't believe I just said that. I do not like things set in our world. There's something about it that just pulls me out of the story and makes it so unbelievable. I just can't suspend my disbelief when I'm being told things. I also sometimes feel like it's lazy. I know it's probably a copyright thing, but they changed United Nations in this to be the Unified Nations, and it drives me insane every single time I read it. Because, like, why change that and nothing else? That's what annoys me. I don't know. Because, like, the city names are all the same. We're on Earth. Like, we've talked about Seattle. We're, we're in Budapest. We've talked about Ukraine. Uh, all of these things. And then we're also just talking about this random fey world. 
and it just like my brain doesn't like it and I know I don't like it so it's an anti buzzword for me but I haven't given up yet just because I want to meet the love interest and I want to get to the prison setting I think we're finally getting to that prison setting um but I have a feeling I'm and gonna end up not DNFing it just because I'm terrible at DNFing things once I hit like 100 pages and I'm already really close to 100 pages so to give it that chance I probably will just end up hate rating it which like if you don't want to watch I'll give you a timestamp to skip ahead but I love a good hate read sometimes <laughs> is that just me you know whatever I know so many people love this so I'm still hoping it can turn around for me once we get past some of those like anti buzzword things I hope that makes sense like I don't I truly hope I don't hate it I own a physical copy like I didn't want to hate it I thought I was going to love it here we go back into the smut den we just met our love interest and I just like can't like he's described as alpha brutal raw dangerous terrifying sensual all with periods between them it's just like you're being a little dramatic don't you think just a little bit five seconds later her nipples are hard from looking at him you just met him and you're in a prison what why he's probably a dangerous criminal you don't want to sleep with him i promise well you shouldn't want to i can't every time they mention the love interest it's just this dramatic italic h-i-m period it's like him there's only one person on top him i saw him um from across the courtyard i saw him like it's just so dramatic and like why are we being this dramatic i just we're in prison try to stay alive stop thinking about sleeping with people everyone in this prison is just thinking about sleeping with people instead of like how the fuck am I gonna get out of here? How am I gonna escape? How am I gonna live to see another day? No one said you're just like, you're kind of hot, but you hot though. Wanna be in my bed? I just hopped to the shower. I finished Savage Lands, but I'm tired. I'm going to bed. I'll tell you about it in the morning. <laughs> Good morning. It's Sunday. Coffee is needed. Coffee is good. Woke up today and I feel not productive enough during Smut Den and all of you are gonna tell me it was okay and it is okay. It literally is okay. I'll put my coffee down. But there is something as a creator that makes you feel pressure to make content, to read a lot of books, all of those things. And it's sometimes not healthy. Um, I've done great during Smut Den. I know I have, like this is insane. Uh, but for some reason, I just, I kind of wanted to hit another book. Uh, and so it's the pressure I'm putting on myself is a lot which is fine I should cut this out of the vlog let's talk about the book because unsurprisingly to anyone who's been following along in this video I did not like Savage Lands I wanted to give this book a full shot in the end because so many people love it it is beloved as a series and I wanted to just like see if it could turn my thoughts around I did like the book more as I read it but it went from like a one star to a two star so like I still didn't like it there are some reasons why one being the urban setting and how lazy I think the world building was because of that which is my own personal issues because a lot of people love an urban setting but I just felt like we used people and pla we used places that we're all familiar with and then just didn't describe why they're different. I just feel like within this world we were never really told what happened to make the Fae, where they came from, how that happened, anything like that. And I had questions about that. This is a five, six book series, so maybe you'll get answers down the line, but I want them in the first book most of the time. I mean, at least a little bit. Like, I feel I've gotten, I feel like I got nothing in this. Like, I feel like I got nothing in this and I just wanted more. Second, what is the romance in here? Like, what is the romance? They don't even talk until the last hundred pages of the book. Like, they say five words to each other and just stare at each other and make googly eyes. Like. I don't understand I don't understand and then all of a sudden we trust him and I'm like why why like we haven't like he's given us no reason to trust him and every time he walks in the room he's we're told that he's big and he's sexy to a point where like <clears throat> I know that there's a really hot fan art of him like really hot fan art 
But the way he's described, he's described as like gigantic and overbearing and having a really big physique makes me think of like a giant or an ogre. <laughs> and then his voice is always like deep and bellowing and it makes me think of a giant or an ogre. Needless to say, I was not picturing a hot, sexy Warwick. I was picturing <laughs> this which is not a fun time. But from reading this, I learned a lot about my reading taste. I love a slow burn with banter, really slow burn. Like I want it to be slow burn and that's what I've learned. Two, I don't like stories that are just dripping in innuendos and sex or gore for no reason. Uh, this book, everyone is horny all the time. Everyone is naked. Everyone is talking about sleeping with each other. And it just doesn't tighten the read for me. It just makes me feel like, it just, it, it turns me off of a book when every five lines there's something that is an innuendo or like dirty talk or feels just forced. Like there was so much sexual tension. It's not tension. It just feels like forced sexual commentary more than anything. And I have the same problem with Her Soul to Take. I think same with like Desperate Measures. So I just know I really don't like that. I want it to be just like a nuanced story that leads to sexual tension and chemistry and a slow burn romance. I don't want it to start off with a banging scene. I don't want that in my books. Like I don't want every five seconds to be talking about how someone is so fucking hot and how I want to get in their pants. I don't want to be fighting. I want my protagonist to be fighting for her life. And the only thing she is thinking about is how hot the guy is and wanting to sleep with him. No, you're gonna die. Think about survival first. We can think about how hot he is later in our in our wet dreams. So yeah, just did not vibe with this. The other thing is I felt like this book was also gory for no reason. We tried to make this prison setting very like brutal, but like didn't really come across that way in a lot of things. There was a lot of plot holes for me. I didn't really like where the plot went. I just didn't like this. That's all. Um, and I'm moving on from it. Will not be continuing on in the series. Maybe you'll like it if you try it because I seem to be an unpopular opinion. There we go. I spun last night. And I got white cover and I went to bed thinking I was going to read The Shadows of Veridhita. Woke up this morning and I just, I'm not in the mood. <laughs> I'm not in the mood for something so unvetted because that has like 50 reviews. Like it could be really good, but it could not be. So I went back to Goodreads and some fantasy romance booktubers that I enjoy and was trying to find something to read. In the end, I don't fully know, but I know a lot of people are wanting to read The Trials of the Sun Queen. This isn't completely vetted either, but it has more ratings than just 50. And so I've decided to do this. It is not a white cover, as you can see. There's white font, uh, but I just, for my own need for this readathon, I think I just want another win more than anything. So I'm setting myself up for success and just reading the book that I really want to read because uh, it is one that I really wanted to get to this weekend. So we're going to do that and hopefully I'll love it because I just, I after hate reading Savage Lens, I just, I needed something good. So we're going to do that and I'll see you in a bit. Already the writing in Trials of Sun Queen, Sun King are really good. Uh, I really like the writing and the author has an author's note at the beginning which says it's going to be probably a four book series and that you can look for easter eggs throughout the book. That made me so happy because that means like it's well planned out and I'm really ready to like enjoy this. I think it could be a good one. Um, I will tell you what it's about in a bit when I've read a little bit more. I do know that again we're in kind of a prison setting and then there's like a tournament like The Bachelor meets The Hunger Games. I am 30% into Trials of the Sun Queen. I'm hoping it'll turn around for me, but at this point I'm finding it just a little bit juvenile and the plot isn't engaging enough for me. We follow our main character who is in a prison. We don't really know why she's in a prison and it's just a little sus. Like she, you know, um, and then something happens and she's kidnapped from the prison and sent to another Fay Court to compete in the Sun Trials, which is a trial to find the Sun King's new wife. So there are nine Fay and one human each time. It's like a, a tradition to put a human in. So she's kidnapped to be the human in this trial. 
and we're not told why at all because like she's not from this realm eat like she's not from this court so it shouldn't be her but for some reason she's special and they want her that's kind of one of my big issues is it just doesn't make sense to me at this point and our main character clearly says this doesn't make sense like it doesn't make sense at all for her either but I don't think that's an excuse for it not to make sense like I I think the way it's done has just left me feeling like it's underdeveloped not that our character's just naive and gonna learn things as we go and that she's special for a certain reason which obviously she is and we're gonna learn like a big reveal later on but like I just feel very underwhelmed underdeveloped at this point like I want to know more I want more world building I want to understand why they pick a human I want to maybe understand more about the phase and the fae power and like stuff like that and I want to spend less time describing the clothes people are wearing it's just my own personal taste that I don't care what color ball gown every person is wearing. And I just, it makes me cringe so hard when writing does that. And it's a really big thing in a lot of indie fantasy romances. So I try to like look past that, but it's something that really gets on my nerves because like, and maybe it's a me thing because like when I go into a room, I don't really pay attention to what people are wearing necessarily. But some people do. Like, some people can tell you exactly what someone wore as they left the room. I'm not one of those people because I just... It doesn't really matter to me. Like, I just want to know about the person. I want to know their personality. I want to know what they like and what they dislike. Not their clothing most of the time. Unless it's, like, a special reason why. Like, if there's a... I think in the Red Queen Quartet, they wore colors based on what house they were in. And, like, that was interesting enough to me because we were, like, picking apart oh, we know this person's in this house because they're wearing a red dress. There needs to be a reason for it more than just, like, looking at the pretty things around them. Yeah, I'm just, like, not sold on the motives that are happening right now, and I hope that gets better. The term, he's just a male and can't be held accountable for his actions, was just used. I hate this book. I should DNF. I'm only 40% in, and we've had so many moments, we've had moments of her walking in on people having sex, people just being crude and making comments about her. We've had someone talk about how he's got a list of clients as long as his eggplant. Um, we just had a lot of crude moments, and if we learned anything from Savage Lands, I don't like them. I just don't understand how someone thinks it's necessary. It's not scene setting. Like, it's just crudeness for the sake of being crude. I'm here for a good smut scene. I'm here for, like... I'm not shy about some of the kinks I have in my life, but, like, stories that just feel like everyone needs to be fucking around. I just don't understand why people like that. Like, what that adds to the plot and the definition of characters or stories. Like, it's different if we're trying to make a character seem that way or, like, it really adds to like a character's backstory but when every character is doing it it's just something that is put into books to make them seem more adult and it irks me like why nothing makes sense in this book i honestly have no idea why i'm still reading this nothing makes sense in this book this book is not good <laughs> um i have reached the first trial and why are we killing these girls like he's trying to find a mate, a match. Why is there a trial of 10 girls where we kill them? Why? Like, it just has to be explained to me why. Like, <laughs> the trial is so stupid where they're hanging from a rope and if they don't get the correct answer, they die. And it's set up in a way to make all these girls fail and not necessarily get, like, survival of the fittest and get the best one which just makes no sense to me. Like, I get that there's issues in, like, fourth wing with people being like, well, why is this a training academy where they kill people? And I understand logistic logistically it makes no sense, but in fourth wing, at least, it, it was explained to me. Like, they did explain enough about the system and how the dragons wanted survival of the fittest to make me believe it. I've had no explanation. We're just told that there's th these trials and that this is how it's done, but never given a reason, like, why, why were these trials started? Anything like that. The king just favors our girl. Like, she's, like, such a big pick-me girl. Like, she's not like any other girl, and for some reason, the king is helping her out, but not helping anyone else out, 
but they've only had one talk before and it makes no sense. It feels so forced. There's no world building. Who are the different fake courts? Cause there's different ones and I only know two out of the four. What makes them different? Mickey wanted to say hi. Hi. Um, I showered <laughs> instead of reading because I decided to DNF this book. I got to a scene where we have the girls who have been fighting and then they're magically friends. There's no nuance to why they become friends. They just all of a sudden decide we shouldn't fight. Let's, let's be friends. Now they're friends and they're sitting in the park and they're like, oh my God, did he kiss you? He kissed me. Did he kiss you? And they're like freaking out about it. Just like what you would expect from like 13 year old girls that have just had their first kiss type thing. And then the mean girl comes up and she's like, why would he kiss you? He's definitely kissed me and he kisses me the bestest and all of that. And I was just like, what am I reading? This is not the book for me. This is not what I want to read. This feels like 13 to 15 year old girls who are having their first crush and don't know how to behave properly. And I just, I'm just not about it. This is not for me. Mm, no. I need to put it out of my mind. I know I'll give it one star because like I'm not having a good time. It's not even fun for me to like hate read it. Like I'm just not having a good time. So I'm DNFing. Now, you know what's funny is I think the internet is wild because some people will watch me hate read Savage Lands and be very pissed off that I hate read it. Um, I had a good time and my enjoyment came from hate reading it. And so like, it's up to me to choose. And then some people will come into my comments like, you didn't give this book a big enough chance why did you DNF it? And I just think it's funny that you can please no one on the internet. Uh, but I've done both things in this vlog and I would just like to say like sometimes I DNF, sometimes I don't DNF. It really depends on the book. So with Savage Lands, I wanted to see how it ended. I wanted to see what the book was all about. So I kept reading. With this book, nothing about it is intriguing me in any sort of the way that I don't wanna know how it ends. And so I'm DNFing it. And at the end of the day, I'm the one reading. I'm the one taking my time experiencing these books and it's my choice. And um, so I don't really need comments down below telling me whether I did great DNFing or if I should have DNFed, you know? Like I, I did what was best for me and what I wanted to do as the reader. Besides the point, I was gonna go and rant about this book a little bit longer. Um, I personally have not read the selection, but I've seen a lot of reviews discussing how it's similar to the selection. I think it reads very, very, very young adult. And then it has some adult themes with like sexual assault and stuff, but not done in an adult discussion way. I think it feels more to me like it's a YA book that we went, oh, I wanna make this adult, let's throw those things in here. Let's throw scenes of her walking into someone having sex. Let's throw these crude moments in to make it feel more adult. But like the story to me feels really, really young adult. And that's okay. Like there's nothing wrong with a YA book. I need, I need to say that it's just not what I particularly wanna read. It doesn't interest me. It's not what I'm looking for. So I didn't like this. I can see why people might like it. The writing is really easy to read. Like it's, it's well written in terms of like writing style. There's just things about it that don't work for me, but maybe those things will work for you. Maybe you don't care as much about fantasy backstories. Maybe you don't care about logical issues as much. Maybe you're just here to have fun and watch these kids go through like a bachelor style thing and hear them squabble about a man and do that. Like maybe that's what you enjoy in your books and that is perfectly fine. That's your personal preference. I'm not sitting here saying this book is crap. No one ever read it. I'm saying this book did not work for me. So I'm DNFing it. And there you go. That is the end of Smut Den. I don't have anything else to say about this book. So I kind of wish I'd listened to the wheel and done a white cover. <laughs> let me know down below if you participated in Smut Den and let me know what your favorite read was. My favorite read of the weekend was definitely A Dawn of Onyx. I had a lot of fun with this. I'm really excited to see what comes next. I also really, really enjoyed the counterpart for the world building and the story, but not necessarily the romance. So I wouldn't recommend it for that. So those two are definitely recommendations that I have for people who are looking for some fun reads uh, and yeah, I really I really liked the banter in A Dawn of Honic, so I definitely really, really suggest this one for a fan row. I own these three that didn't get read this weekend for fantasy romances. Uh, Blood Mercy is one I'm really excited to get to, but it's too chunky for Smut Den, but it is a fantasy romance that I can't wait to get to. I have A Crown of Ivy and Glass that I'm really excited to get to, but also felt just a little too chunky for this weekend. And then Daughter of No Worlds, which is by Carissa Broadbent, who is my favorite fantasy romance author, 
and I cannot wait to read this, but I am reading this as part of Sahar Book Club. I am a co-host for Sahar's Book Club, so we're reading book one in June, book two in July, and book three in August. I would love if you joined me for that. I will put it down below. Sahar runs a fantasy romance book club, and I'm so happy she asked me because I cannot wait to read this one. Yeah, uh, I I had an overall really good weekend. I obviously love hanging out with all of you guys all weekend. I love the participation we get in sprints. It makes it so fun to have everyone just hang out with us for 72 hours because I drop everything and commit. And I love that I get to see all of you all weekend. So thank you so much for hanging out with us. Make sure to subscribe to everyone's channels, not just mine. Mel's, Rise, Michelle's, and Bree's as well. And I'm also going to remind everyone that if you are interested in this lovely Serpent of the Wings bookmark that I made, you can join my Patreon, which is down below. It is for the top tier, which is the Leviathans. This will be sent out beginning of June. So if you join today, you will have a full month's access to my Patreon, but you will get sent this bookmark. You have to join by the end of May. And, and if you just want to leave an emoji to say you were here, leave me some kind of pink emoji. Let's just do a pink emoji for Smut Den. And then if you want to connect with me on other platforms, my books, my book, Twitter, my Goodreads, and my Patreon are all linked in the description bar below. Have yourselves an absolutely remarkable day. <laughs>